I'd like to start by talking a bit about mnemonics. Um, a mnemonic, as I imagine a lot of you know, is simply a device that we use to remember something. So it'll come as no surprise if I tell you that uh, the advertising industry uh, is a heavy user of mnemonics, um, largely in the form of slogans. And we carry these slogans with us for many, many years. If I go back to my childhood, I'm now 46, probably when I was five or six, I first heard, a Mars a day helps you work, rest and play. Remember that one? Or uh, for some reason, Zanussi, the appliance of science. <laughs> That's been in my brain for 40 years. Now, I have four children, and they will grow up with slogans um, such as perhaps O2, we're better connected, or God forbid, compare the Mirkat.com. Um, I'll spare you my rendition of Go Compare. Uh, the point is that how many of these slogans, these mnemonics, actually do us any good? How many of them enhance our well-being and our souls? Well, in my view, very, very few. There was one I remember as a child which did enhance my life. You could say it very possibly saved it, I don't know. It was, it was a, a government campaign by the Highways Agency, or whatever it might have been called at the time. And it was very simple. It was called the Green Cross Code. And their little mnemonic was stop, look, listen, cross. Simple, it's short, and it's memorable. And what's more, for all I know, it saved a great many lives. Now, there is a wonderful movement um, of change at the moment, uh, a movement that we're all testament to, in fact, towards educating adults in the philosophy, the practice, the art, if you like, of happiness. But what about, what about our children? Now, as it happens, I'm a children's author, and I am passionate about encouraging children from a very, very young age to view the world as a positive place, as a place full of surprise, opportunity, love, and friendship. And God knows the media are doing their best to propagate exactly the opposite. So I think it's absolutely crucial to educate our children from the youngest age that we can in the principles of happiness. Now, when I talk of young children, I mean from the ages of, say, three, four upwards, when they're cognitive, when their language is developed. And that's a pretty young age. So obviously, we have to look at this. We have to look at something very, very simple, a very simple and easy to use, and moreover, easy to remember formula. So, when I think of happiness, there's one activity that comes to my mind that encapsulates everything important that I believe about happiness, and that activity is dance, dancing. It's very hard to dance when you're miserable or angry or sad, and it's very instinctive dance. It's a wonderful expression of joy. And most importantly, it comes very, very naturally to children, much more naturally, in fact, than to adults, certainly than to this adult. Um, so I wanted to look at this word, dance, this beautiful poetic word, dance, and use it as some kind of formula for a mnemonic for children to educate them in what I believe are the fundamental principles of happiness. Now, because, in my view, children have an extraordinary, and I think perhaps rather underrated facility uh, for understanding quite deep and complex life truths through story, through parable, through fable, I thought the best way to teach them the art and the practice of happiness would be to write a series of very, very simple fables, each one of which 
encapsulated what I believe to be one of the tenets, one of the fundamental rules, if you like, of happiness. So uh, under the name of World of Happy, I wrote these 13 stories. And I'm going to write down now this word, dance. So I've isolated five rules of happiness for children, each of which I'd like to apply to one of these letters. One of these letters, as you may have guessed, each of these letters stands for a, a word that is key to leading a, a happy, uh, fulfilled, and productive life. You'll see what I mean in a moment, I hope. This story is called The Pink Cricket. Two things are true about crickets. They're green, and they play the violin. So when one cricket said he was a drummer, all the other crickets laughed. He was also pink. Crickets can no more play the drums than fish can play football. Pinky, they jeered. Even his best friend was getting tired of the drum thing. If a drummer is what you really want to be, he said, come to the concert tonight. Give it everything you've got, and let's just see what happens. That's all that you can do. The pink cricket began to drum. It was a sound that no other cricket had ever heard before. Those drums became that cricket's heart and soul, and the music poured out of him like a fresh, pure river of groove. And every cricket with a violin began to laugh, then cry, then cheer, then scream, shake it, baby! Shake it like the big, beautiful, pink drumming cricket that you really are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the pink cricket. So this D here stands for dedication. Dedication. We all know the pleasure of doing things well when we've had a lot of practice. It's great to be able to play a musical instrument, for instance, extremely well. But much of the joy in that is about learning, is about practice, it's about really committing ourselves to something, working hard, feeling, you're probably familiar with the principle of flow, whereby you get completely lost in the moment, you're so absorbed with what you're doing at the time. Dedication is fundamental to happiness. The little penguin. There was once a little penguin who was frightened of the water. This is no way for penguins to behave, said his father. Be gentle, said his mother, for all of us have fears that others may find hard to understand. You can see what the daddy cricket thinks of advice from his wife. Come, little penguin, come into the water with me. But what if it's cold, said the penguin. What if it's dark and deep? What if there's a big, fat, scary monster? And what if I can't swim? Ah, said his mother, but what if it's light and beautiful? What if all your brothers and sisters are there? What if there are fish for you to eat and friends for you to play with? Come, little penguin, take my hand. And with great courage and great trust, the little penguin slipped into the water. And for the first time in his life, he felt the joy and freedom, wonder and delight that every penguin's heart is born to know. So that A there stands for active. We must be active and we must remain active throughout the whole of our lives. Um, you're familiar, obviously, with the fact that when we're, we're literally physically active, when we exercise, we release endorphins, it makes us feel good. But when I say we must remain active throughout all our lives, what I mean is we must constantly strive to do new things, to try new things. It's often hard to get children to try new things, whether it be food, uh, or whether it's vegetables, or swimming, like the little penguin. But the most interesting older people I meet are always the ones who come up with some very surprising activity that they just started. Remaining active keeps us engaged with life. It keeps us interested 
and it keeps us interesting. Um, there's a quote by, I can't remember the name of a, a, he's an Australian poet, and he said something like, um, I'm only interested in everything. That's a good motto. The lovely whales. There was a time when whales were rather small. But long ago, there were two whales who changed their kind for good. I love you, said the gentleman. I do. I love you more, said the lady right back. I double diddy love you, said the man. And now something odd began to happen. At every declaration of desire, each whale became a little bigger than before. I triple diddy love you times a million and a half, the girl replied. Hmm, the man then hmmed. This was not an easy one to beat, so he swam up to his lady and he kissed her. You great big whale of loveliness, he said. And she grew and grew and grew. The whales are now the largest creatures on the planet. Have you looked into a whale's eye? If you do, you'll see they know the secret of the universe. And the secret of the universe, of course, is love. Or in this case, nurture, nurture, love, kindness, friendship. And what we need to understand, particularly for children, I think it's quite hard to take on to begin with, is how it's as much about what we put in as what we get out with love. The more kindness we put into the world, the more kindness we derive from it. It's a very simple formula, like, for instance, we take great pleasure from a rose in our garden, from the fragrance, the beauty of the flower. But perhaps quite a bit of that pleasure is derived from the work that we put in, in cultivating uh, and pruning that rose. The dance of wallowy bigness. There was once a hippopotamus who dreamed of being able to dance with grace and beauty. However, when she tried, she could barely lift her bottom off the ground and her stomach wobbled most uncomfortably indeed. It's just not fair, said the hippopotamus, and she began to weep. Come now, said a passing crocodile, perhaps you're simply trying the wrong dance. What kind of dance would be your dance, and your dance only? Well, I am wallowy and big, sniffed the hippopotamus. I suppose I've never seen a dance of wallowy bigness. Then she smiled. What a dance that would be. Slowly, she began to move her hips. The water around her slopped and gurgled as her great belly gyrated, and it felt good. She poured her whole heart and soul into that dance, and the music inside her rose to the surface like a silent roar, a silent roar of joy. Like the big hippopotamus, it's crucial to celebrate. Now, that may sound obvious. In a way, it is. But to be happy, we need to celebrate life. You can, you can only really celebrate with other people, with your community, with your friends, with your family, celebrating our triumphs, as well as commiserating about our weaknesses with our peers and friends and community, helps bring out the joy in life. Planet of the Bears is the final story I want to, to talk to you about. The bears had all the stuff they needed, yet still they wanted more. But then one clever bear said, look, our planet's dying. I think this stuff is killing it, my friends. But bears need stuff. The bears all cried. Then why are you not happy? The clever bear replied. And just then, something magical occurred. A mother bear picked up her baby, and she beamed with joy. The clever bear ran over with a jar and closed it on the vapor of her smile. He planted it, and instantly, bright flowers bloomed. 
That's it, he said. Instead of making stuff, we bears must manufacture love. Assail your fellow bears with kindness and bottle just a bit each time for me. Soon the clever bear had filled a giant jar with love. He travelled to the planet's heart and planted it inside. The planet of the bears is now awash with life. And all the bears are happy. And all the stuff is gone. E. Enjoy. Well, of course, we've got to enjoy things to be happy. But the point about enjoyment is you can only enjoy what you have. Obviously, you can't enjoy what you don't have. And in fact, one of the uh, keys to unhappiness is people, in whatever society, at whatever level of riches, as long as you're above the poverty line, people need to be grateful for what they have. You, can, you have to enjoy what you have. You can only enjoy what you have. And the more grateful for we are for what we have, for what's around us, the more our happiness level increases. And of course, you can only, by nature of the activity, you can only enjoy the present. You can't enjoy the past. You can enjoy memories of the past, but your memory is being activated in the present. So we have to, as much as we can, enjoy the here and now and encourage our children. They're probably better at it than us, but all the same, we all need to know that we must try, and it's hard, but we must try to savour the present, to enjoy as much as we can every moment that we have. So there it is, dedication, active, nurture, celebrate, enjoy, dance. If you, if we, if our children can learn to dance through life, I'm sure we'll all have very happy, productive, fruitful, and joyful lives indeed. Thank you. Thank you.